This year's Druids Challenge registration kicked off at Tring Rugby Club, where we dropped off our overnight bags, picked our race numbers and our trackers, and then boarded the coach that would take us all to the start at Ivinghoe Beacon. So we're getting towards the start line now. We've been dropped off by the, uh, the coach and all the runners are making our way to the start point. Have fun, see you later. Not settled in yet. We're well, starting ultra. So it feels really surreal that you've actually just started. But it is pretty awesome to be on this ancient footpath, the Ridgeway, 5,000 years old. And it's one of the oldest, well, it is the oldest path in England. I've always wanted to walk along it, and now I'm running along it. About an hour in, just had my first bit of food, which is definitely needed. There's no better time to be running through a wood than the autumn, is there? So beautiful here, really lovely. The, the leaders of the fast group just going past me and they're identical twins. And they both said, hey, how you doing? Good luck. It was like stereo sound. <laughs> that was pretty cool of them. Oh, this is pretty cool. Whoa, close. So I stick into the uh, eating every hour. And uh, just a reminder how lovely the blueberry muffin naked bar is. Oh my God. Just followed another two runners. We were going off the path, off the path. And I thought, oh, they look like they know where they're going. And they were going to Costa in Wendover. And one of them, I'm sure, had a little chuckle to themselves as they saw me behind them because I had to walk all the way back through Wendover <laughs> and get back on the path. So that's two now, Phil. Getting some height now. Oh, coming out of Wendover. No hills, Phil. Let's try not to worry about it. Approaching Coombe Hill now. Just done half a marathon. Just a constant reminder, stay in the present, holding it back. Three days. We've got 350Ks to do here, so I've never done that before in my life. Beautiful. Right, let's get some running done. Start to feel a little bit dizzy. I reckon it's probably altitude sickness, you know. I'm taking the salt tablets every hour and I'm definitely eating food. So I just got to put it down to <laughs> not being used to going up and down hills. No hills feel, he's not used to it. Wow, stunning. I'm on the Ridgeway. Ridgeway, baby. Oh, starting to flag a bit now. 19 miles, nearly 20 miles in. My mind is starting to wander into the next couple of days. I've got to pull it back from that. That's not doing me any good at all. Uh, just got to focus on the mile that I'm in here right now. Get, get today done, get this mile done. Just get this little section done and enjoy myself. Just trying to give myself, trying to let myself off while we're doing some walking here. It's not about super fast. Actually, there are some people that are doing it who are super fast, but the, the thing I love about this event is it's for everybody. There's people who walk all the way. There's people like me who walk, run. And there's people who sprint. Well, not sprint, but they're pr pretty fast, let's say that. But everybody's the same. Everybody gets the same medal. And everybody enjoys being outside in the country. So I'm just gonna save you for a bit. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue and then we'll take you higher. Oh God! That's not bad. That's not bad. View that. Sun starts to come down. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom. Oh, wow. 
sun's going down on me. Oh joy, just what you want when it gets dark. <laughs> slip, slippity, slip, slippity, slip, slip, shiroo. I can't see a thing and there's mud bloody everywhere. That doesn't rhyme. More fascinating content in the dark. So that's day one of the Dreams Challenge completed. Yeah. Well, 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 good job. Good job. Yes. Day one done. Well, here we are in the Hilton five-star hotel that we've got to spend the night in tonight. It's absolutely <laughs> incredible, isn't it? Look at that. Well, I, I got to say, this is bizarre. Staying in a school hall like this. All with like-minded other trail runners, which is great, but uh, I think the night's of sleep is going to be interesting. I managed to get myself a, a mat to sleep on, which is great. And there's tea and coffee and we just had some dinner, lasagna and some cake, which is great. There's, ma there's massages over there in the corner. I felt, I felt like terrible when I was out there on the run, but as soon as I got here, I felt fine. <laughs> I felt absolutely fine now. So yeah, looking forward to tomorrow. I'll, I'll probably get a better sleep tonight than I did last night. I woke up at half past two in the morning. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. So the sun rises on day two. I've never run an ultra before and got up in the next morning and run another ultra. This is what I'm attempting to do today. Not the easiest of places to sleep, but I did manage to get some sleep because when they put the lights on at half past five, I was fast asleep. It took me a while to get ready and I had to be on the 6.30 bus. They sort of take you out in waves based on your finish time. And that was the first bus of the day. So a uh, mixture of walkers and runners going off this morning at this time. Yeah, the legs are feeling a bit tired, as you can imagine, but feeling a bit rushed out the door this morning. I'm not used to getting up and getting out that quickly for an ultra. So hopefully everything will start to feel normal very soon. So this has been the first real test of this new Harrier Exmoor jacket that I bought. Uh, and I recently did a video on it. I'll leave a link uh, in the description and put one at the top here. But uh, I gotta say, one of the big features of yesterday that helped me was these little, do you mind sheep? I'm trying to do a video. Yeah, these, sorry. They're one of the best features that I found yesterday with the, using the jacket on an ultra is these little clips. So once you get hot, uh, but it's still slightly windy, just unzip the jacket completely and just go for the clips here. It's, it's really, Really lovely little feature that, nice and helpful. Thumbs up, Harrier. Nice work. So lovely being here. And the trees are looking like this. Not great in the older uh, water preparation this morning. I literally had to run for the bus. Uh, so I, I filled up one water bottle and uh, half of it fit, sloshed out. Well, not half of it, three. Yeah, a quarter of it or whatever so I've still got some water but not much left in there that's not great and uh, a reminder from the staff there to keep hydrated before we start is so important well the sun is now rising though you can see it coming through the trees here this is why we sleep on the floor <laughs> wow What's also has been great about this event is all the different nationalities of all the runners and walkers. I've spoken to people from New Zealand, from Germany, from Austria, from Poland, and Ireland, and Scotland, and all different places, all around Europe and, and America. There's an American as well. So it's a great international feel about it. It really feels like a really proper event, you know? That dove cot up there looks like a, an old dove cot. What's a house that was? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Wow. It's still stunning though. Yeah, absolutely. In a different way. Look at this. 
Oh my God. I mean, the sun now, look at that. I mean, woof. At breakfast, I was sitting with a couple of guys and they're obviously a lot more experienced than I am. And they said, uh, you know, have you ever done a multi-day event? I said, no. Still, the first hour will be terrible. You feel awful. And then after that, you feel much better. And uh, that's definitely what's happened this morning. I mean, it does help if you're in places like this, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the running today after that start. Knees were hurting, everything was hurting, but you know, you expect that uh, after running an ultra. So, but this is just spectacular. Once again, blessed with so beautiful weather, just like my St. Cuthbert's Way. I mean, I must be some good lucky charm or something because uh, I know it's not always like this. What also is great is the, uh, the split between men and women on this event. 48% women, 52% men. That's great, that's really good. It's good to see such an inclusive uh, event. So great to be running and walking with some amazing women out on this course. It's really good to say nearly a 50-50 split. Just shows you how strong women are at ultra running. It's a shame it's not making them. Iconic car. Lovely little village. Really lovely. Got a good old British red foam box there. One for Ashley, because I know you like them. I think we are down near the River Thames now. I've been warned about this section. <laughs> it's going to be pretty muddy. But uh, once again, it's just an attitude. At least we can see it. Last night's mud from the last checkpoint that everybody was moaning about uh, over dinner last night. You couldn't see it, it's dark. Well, for people like me, running the time I am. Wow. Been considering about my thoughts about the Thames Path, the Thames Path Ultra, because I've said I'm going to do it again. But coming along the Ridgeway makes me realise, uh, and St Cuthbert's Way, makes me realise that I just love so much seeing new places. So why would I go back to the Thames Path? I'd love to try and do it better, but is that really my ethos? Is that really what I stand for? Is that really why I do these events? It's not to try and improve really and get better and be faster and get a better time. It's about the experience, it's about enjoying it. It's about being out in the countryside and appreciating what we've got and being in new places. So I'm not sure at the moment, I'm not sure. Maybe I should start looking further afield. Through the checkpoint there, finally taking my jacket off. Day and a half in, and the jacket's come off. But it's warming up today, we've got a sun all day. I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm gonna need this jacket tomorrow. Really good aid stations on the Druids Challenge, it must be said. Uh, you've got everything there. Real good selection of salt, snacks, sweet snacks, sandwiches, drinks, and the people are really friendly and really helpful. I always thank all the uh, volunteers. Without them, we couldn't do these amazing adventure runs. It's another beautiful thatched cottage there. So yeah, fair play to all the volunteers out there who volunteer for ultra marathons. We really, really appreciate all the time you put in. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, yeah, thank you. Big shout out to all the X-Energy staff, volunteers, Neil, put together a great team there. So, I doff my cap to you all. Hey, wow. Thank you. All right, mate. All right, how you doing? Best wishes, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Cheers. And those are the twins at the front, the fast runners coming through. Adopted the, uh, the run walk counting method that I did in the Thames Path to uh, help me stay focused on the running. I'm doing 200 steps running or 300 steps running if it's flat. And I'm finding that if I just do that and then stop and then walk, power walk, hills and stuff like that, it's actually, it feels like more beneficial than yesterday. So I'm gonna keep that up. This is about 17, 18 miles and this hill here has been going on for quite a while and it's gonna get steeper again. Hello! 
Can you help me? Wide open spaces with around two miles to go. Should I run? Want to run? Can I run? <laughs> run when you can, walk when you have to. So that's what I'm doing. It's all about enjoyment. We do this to enjoy ourselves. And if I want to walk it in, I will. I can't quite believe I've done that. We've still got one more day to go. Bonkers. There you go, day two of the Jewish Challenge complete. All part of the service, you get to the end and then you get bus back to where we're staying the night. I think it's a, le I think it's a leisure centre. It's worth pointing out that you can hire these camp beds from the race company and it would definitely make your night's sleep a little more pleasant. So where do you put a hundred runners, dirty running trainers when you're staying in a leisure centre overnight? Why oh, you put them in a squash court, of course? Look at these. A cool a surprise for me was this pop-up running shop by My Race Kit, and it allowed uh, people in the hall to sort of buy any extra bits they needed, poles, tops. Um, I bought some in Gingy socks from here, and they're very, very good quality. But there was also gels and uh, blister treatment kits such as these on the table here. Around about six o'clock there was uh, an evening meal which was chili con carne or veggie con carne. I think there was a ratatouille as well. Uh, followed by some lovely looking cake. Look at these, they were really yummy. After dinner there was two guest speakers who shared some really interesting ultra running stories. And then it was lights out and getting ready for day three. Well, it's the start of day three and my second night in the sports hall it was a very difficult night's sleep. I'm hoping the running will wake me up, but uh, difficult. I mean, this is, I've got 29.7 29 miles to go. That's the last time I will say that to myself today, but uh, it, it was difficult start to the day. But uh, fair, apparently it's not too hilly at the beginning. It's fairly straight, so fingers crossed it all goes okay, but at the moment I feel like a walking zombie, so yeah. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves. So we're off once again, just walking for five minutes. Everybody's gone. Just trying to like my own little warm up for five minutes, get myself in the right headspace, because I'm not at the moment, I can tell you, I feel like a walking zombie, but hopefully after about an hour or so, I'll perk up. This is the final push, the final challenge ahead. Another 28, 29 miles, and then, I, and then I'm there. Yeah, really tough start. My knees are in agony. This is where the challenge starts. Just staying in the mile you're in doing what you can. Thankfully it's nice and straight, nice and flat. But you've got to run your own race. You know, everybody is in front of me. And most people have probably done it before, but this is way more than I've ever done. If you're watching this and you're considering signing up, Here's a couple of golden rules. You buy yourself an inflatable bed mat. You only get one bag allowance, which they carry for you from day by day, which is fantastic. But you've got to get everything in there for three days of running. All your gear, all your overnight stuff, your chargers, all your stuff. And I thought quite naively, I'll be all right. I'll just use a uh, you know, mat in the hall. Really difficult night's sleep. And I didn't really have a proper pillow either. Just got a little cushion from an armchair. I thought because of the size, that's quite good. Pack it in, but I'd probably get a blow up pillow as well. It was quite cold in there. So I wore a hat, I went to bed. I got in the corner with some ladies because you know they're not going to snore. And then a guy came in later on <laughs> and he's snoring all night. So earplugs, the best ones you can get, I guess. 
So yeah, I guess you only learn by doing things. Beautiful landscape. We weren't so tired, I'd appreciate it even more. It's obviously overcast, misty, but you know, it's the middle of November. Yay, some trees! Woohoo! This is why I went for the larger the Harrier X4 because now I can put my um, hydration vest underneath this uh, rain jacket. So I know I've got everything inside wrapped up. I know everything is dry and it, and it works. It fits fine. It's going great. So we're all happy with that. Seven miles in. It's a constant uh, mental battle running ultras. You're constantly trying to avoid things. You're constantly trying to stay positive. Like I'm trying not to think about when the next checkpoint's coming. Trying to not to think about that. I'm not running very much. It's just a constant battle with, with your brain to stay positive. I quite enjoy it, but there's stages where you think, up your neck. Good luck, mate. Last day. Well Good done, mate. Ready. Absolutely epic. Go for it, man. Have a good one. Cheers, mate, and you. What's great about him is, He's super fast, but he's so friendly, so encouraging to every single runner. Must be so tiring to say that every past every person. So yeah, yesterday was what? 27 and a half trial run. He ran it in three and a half hours. I did mine in about six hours, 55. <laughs> Epic. Inspiring though, right? It's great. He's he knows we're all the same tribe. He knows we're all the same crazy people. Don't know what your name is, mate, but fair play to you. Take my hat off. Excellent attitude. Just made a complete tit of myself in chat one there, talking absolute bollocks. I didn't even understand what I was saying, so God knows what the people in there thought I was talking about. So sorry about that, chat point one. I've not had any sleep for about three three days. That's my excuse for talking absolute gibberish to you. I think it might be time to look for a different model of ultra. Keep clipping my ankle with these massive big things at the back here of these Olympus. I mean, they are very stable, but I've got scratches and scars on both ankles over these three days. So, time to maybe go for the Superior or the Mont Blanc, maybe. Let's see which one is the widest. Stick with Ultra. Could go with Topo Athletic. Heard good things about that. So, maybe that's the shout. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. You know you're an ultra runner when you care more about the snack you're about to eat than the views that are all around you. I'm surrounded by a beautiful countryside and I'm more excited about eating my breakaway. Just coming off White Horse Hill. Knee's starting to hurt a little bit. Not sure what that is, just, just overuse I guess, you know? Uh, I'm still running. Well, I can, but uh, yeah, the old left knee starting to give me a bit of jip. Okay. Okay, I can't lie. This is a this is a crappy bit <laughs> over the M4 along this really busy road. I suppose it's a bit of a path. That's okay. Well, hopefully, we're coming off now. But it's not all plain sailing on the Druids Challenge. Man, this is getting tough. The wind's picked up. It's rain. It's really muddy underfoot. My battery's gonna go at any moment. <laughs> Always knew it was gonna kick my ass towards the end of day three. That is mile 20. Just seven to go on the Drew's challenge. I got that totally wrong. It's 29 and a half miles today, not 27. That's wishful thinking. So still, still about about 10 miles to go. Give or take, unless I, unless I get lost, of course. Nice respite for the wind over here with some trees, some hedges, and uh, do some time to appreciate the views. Now that is a fancy looking sign. Very nice. I bet my hair looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, really good, Phil, really good. Oh well. <laughs> it's not a fashion show, it's a bloody ultra. 
I love the look of these ancient byways like this. So lovely. So much history, you can feel it as you come down here. It's probably a, well, it was a really busy route. Not turned into a road. A substantial, you know, a byway. Love it. Does that make me weird? Probably. I'm feeling a bit sick now. But we are approaching sort of the final checkpoint, which is great. Uh, there's only about seven or so miles to go, but yeah, a bit of hanging at the moment. That's what happens. And uh, back in my uh, happy place amongst the trees. So, through the last checkpoint, had a bit of a moan, got a sausage roll, got a mini baby bell, 10k, probably all uphill. Let's go get this finished. Come on! Even in the darkest hours. Got to have a quick look. Where have you been? Where are you going? We're getting there, we're getting there. Try to stay positive towards the end. Little way to go. A couple of miles now. The beautiful scenes. Gonna start looking a bit left and right. Starting to go a little bit inside. Just want it done. We all do that when we get to the end, right? Two or three miles left or whatever we've got. We just want it to be over. When it took a wrong turn back there, that could have been disastrous. It could have been miles off. And I'm gonna make it before it gets dark, which was the only thing that I wanted to do. But we haven't got it done yet, so let's get it done. Uh, this is a long tarmac finished, and my knee is gone completely. I don't know where it's gone, but uh, it stopped me from running, so I got a wet walk to the finish. That is the end, the finish line of the Jewish Challenge. Three days on the Ridgeway, three ultra marathons in a row. Done by loopy people like me. If you've been watching this far, thank you very much for watching.